let's talk about what it can do. So um, there's some research studies, and I'll put a few of these up for you. So um, changes. there's one study on the changes in intestinal barrier function. So what these authors of, these, of this research found is that gut permeability, in, es- in other words, leaky gut, right, it, that meat glue exposure increased the permeability of the GI tract. It increased the leaky gut scenario that is a precursor to autoimmune disease. Now, keep in mind, celiac is only one form of autoimmune. There are more than 100 forms of autoimmune disease, and pretty much most of them that we know of to date are started, in a sense, a big part of the initiation process of an autoimmune disease itself is leaky gut. So you get, you know, basically microscopic pores in the GI tract where now bacteria and bacterial toxins and other things can leak into the bloodstream, damage the liver, get into the systemic circulation and create system-wide damage. And that's really something that you want to try to avoid. So why would we want to avoid meat glue? Because Research is now showing that meat glue actually contributes to a permeability or a leaky gut. It's one of the main factors involved with uh, with the impact or the effect that meat glue has. Now, it's not all that it does. It actually too can, but it's been shown now to bind with gluten and and um, and other proteins to create what are called antigenic peptides, meaning it it can bind to other things. And when it binds with these other things, it, it tricks your body into thinking that they're foreign. It's actually not tricking your body. It is foreign, right? Meat glue plus another protein bound together that creates an immune response in a person is not really a trick. It's your body saying, no, that stuff is not something that we really want inside of us. Let's create an immune response against it. So another research study shows that uh, that meat glue itself drives the autoimmune process again by creating new types of of protein. So number one, let's we look at kind of let's draw us a list here. If we want to look at what meat glue does, right? Or what it causes. Number one is it increases leaky gut. Number two, it increases protein Allergenicity. Big fancy word, all that means is it makes proteins that you eat more allergic than they would be if you weren't eating them with meat glue. So it increases the allergenicity of proteins that are typically already being found in your diet. So um, again, these are two big things because we see, what are we seeing today? And you hear this a lot, people saying, well, kids years ago didn't used to have the allergic reactions to foods that they had 30 years ago or 40 years ago. And the fact of the matter is, is that, that first of all, that that's not necessarily true. Kids today are eating food that isn't food. And so it's not the same thing. We can't compare the hot dog of 40 years ago to the hot dog today. There's a lot more chemicals. There's a lot more pesticides. There's a lot more things that are being pumped into that food that weren't being pumped into that food years ago. So it's not like comparing apples to apples. It's not like kids are more allergic today than they were years ago. It's that kids are being pumped full of chemicals that make their body react in in a greater way. And they're being given these chemicals with food as the delivery mechanism. And nobody's really talking about why the food is different now versus what it was then. And that's a big, big part of it. So the other thing that we've said, so back to what meat glue does. One of the other things that we know that meat glue does is it increases the potency of gluten. So it makes gluten Uh, Well, let's see. Let's get the right color here. It makes gluten react stronger. So it increases gluten reaction. Okay, and that's a big one because even if you are, let's say you're following the traditional gluten-free diet, right? You're eating processed grains of the oat, corn, and rice variety, and you're eating those processed grains, and that contains meat glue. And these processed grains still do contain gluten, but now you're exacerbating that with the meat glue in the product. And so it's ramping up those glutens in those technically, quote unquote, gluten-free grains. Again, they're not really truly gluten-free. They're gliadin-free, which is very, very different. Remember, gliadin is the substance that celiac disease is caused by. But there are other forms of gluten in grains. And so what, what meat glue does is it increases that gluten-like reaction. The other thing, by increasing its uptake. So the other thing that we know 
that that meat glue does as a whole is it creates something called post-translational modification of proteins. So that's a big fancy way of saying that it alters the shape and structure of proteins after your genetics code for them. So it changes the structure of some of your proteins systemically and that can create an immune response or a systemic immune reaction in the body as well. So we don't want those changes necessarily, but meat glue brings them about. It can alter the proteins. Let me give you an example of how um, how you might understand in another way. So any of you have ever been ta told about diabetes. So what happens when you get too much sugar is that sugar changes the shape or the structure of the proteins that your body produces. And that's post-translational, meaning it's not a problem with your DNA. Your DNA produced the protein to be what it was supposed to be, but the sugar made it sticky and altered its shape. It, it modified the protein after it was produced by your DNA. And meat glue does the same thing. Remember, this is a very sticky substance just like sugar is and so getting into your bloodstream systemically can change the shape and the structure and the function of the proteins. There's a law in, in physiology and I've, you've maybe heard me say this before but structure dictates function. So when you change the structure of something by adding a chemical that alters that structure and that what's going to happen as a result of that change is anyone's guess. But we know that there are a number of different diseases linked to the post-translational modification of proteins and Alzheimer's and cognitive decline is just one in a long list of diseases that we know uh, are, are created as a result of the changes of proteins, right? There's a, in Alzheimer's something called beta amyloid placking, which we think it, what it is is it's sugar changing the structure of, neuro, of the fibers and neurons that are creating an inability for nerves to communicate moving forward. So that's a pretty big deal. So increasing the gluten reaction, and then we're going to abbreviate this. It alters protein function in the body. And so that can lead to you know a host of different types of problems. And, and again, altering the structure equals altering the function. And then the fifth thing that we know that it can do according to research is it has immunogenic potential. So in other words, I said before that it can increase the way other proteins are viewed by your body, which is kind of part of what this is, but it also, your immune system will attack it. So immune systems are now being shown not to like this stuff. And when your immune system attacks that meat glue, the side effect or the, uh, we'll call it the uh, collateral damage of that attack is inflammation. So you can get a systemic inflammation process that leads to problems. So we definitely want to avoid, uh, avoid any of these things, if at all possible, by avoiding the meat glue in the first place. So if you again, I wanted to talk about this because this is something that's being used more and more and more. It started several years ago, but as the food industry continues to change, as manufacturing continues to change, as gluten-free diets are more and more popular, this substance has become more and more popular. So this didn't cause the onslaught of what we see with gluten sensitivity, but it is certainly working together with that gluten sensitivity to exacerbate it. And that's what I want you to understand. It's, it's kind of like the, a lot of people talk about the pesticides, particularly glyphosate, and say, well, you know, we didn't, gluten sensitivity didn't exist before glyphosate, and, and gluten sensitivity is really nothing more than glyphosate toxicity. That's not true. Gluten is part of the problem. But when we use foods that are highly processed using a substance called meat glue to, to increase their palatability, it exacerbates the problem and makes it worse and makes it stand out more. And the more we use this substance to produce more and more foods that are quote unquote gluten free, the more and more problems that get created over time as a result uh, of that. And so these problems are the problems that we see happening. So all that being said, I hope you take away a lot from tonight's show in terms of what not to eat, right? What not to eat is, is very, very important. You don't want to put this stuff in your body. And check out these two videos right here. They might have life-saving, life-changing information for you. Make sure you subscribe so we can send you updates and click the link below. I've got a free gift for you today. It's our Leaky Gut Guide. It's a two-hour video and 68-page ebook for you. If you're trying to overcome leaky gut, we want to be able to give you a resource that's invaluable to help you on that path.